What if I told you that you could create a 3D render like this in about five minutes without any previous experience or knowledge or anything like that? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So to begin, we're gonna take a look at where you would normally start with a project like this, and that is usually in a 2D design software. So if you're a creative person, if you're a package designer, if you're a branding person or a product creator, anything like that, you would generally start inside of a software like Illustrator like this. And basically you would have your 2D design and then you'd be like, okay, cool. I want to talk to my client. I want to talk to the people who are going to be approving this and show them what this 2D thing looks like on a 3D package. For that, you take this into something like a Photoshop. You could grab this and then, you know, copy and paste it into your product. You would scale it down. You would twist it up. And there certainly are ways and all y'all got incredible Photoshop witchcraft skills that you can go in here and you can tweak this and you can make your adjustments. And no matter how good you can make this look, there's still going to be some limitations to it. And the biggest ones are things like, okay, cool. You've got this in here exactly where you want it. What happens if the client's like, actually, we want to see it in a branding example, or we want to just see it at a slightly different angle. Like, couldn't you just make that glass a little bit darker? I, and, and I guess you could, but the problem is, is that like, you would have to make some pretty serious tweaks to it because even just making the glass darker, you know, once you make the glass darker, you're also adjusting the specular highlights, the reflections, the refractions, that kind of thing. And you don't fully have the type of control over it that would make it believable. Well, let's eliminate all that. Let's, let's do an entirely different workflow. And I know new workflows are scary and they're intimidating. Believe me, I get it. But I guarantee you this progress is very, very easy. It's just a lot of dragging and dropping stuff. A lot of just leaning into the creative abilities you already have. And it is not too much effort, I promise you. So let's get into it. So to do this, what we're gonna use is Substance 3D Stager. And the first thing that you're going to need is your eyedropper bottle right in the middle of the screen here. To do that, all you have to do is go up to this little plus icon in the corner and browse the assets in the marketplace. And you got a little preview of it ahead of time, but you can see I got this little bottle dropper right here. So all I did was I downloaded it and now I'm going to drag and drop it into the scene for my desktop. And just like that, I have a 3D model of an eyedropper in my scene. But you can imagine this isn't exactly, this doesn't look the way that we want, right? For starters, you know, the glass isn't right and that, you know, we want a little rubber stopper on the top. It's no problem at all. We can just go up into our starter menu, type in glass, drag and drop it in here. And for rubber, same thing. I can just type in rubber here and there we go. If I wanted to get fancy with the rubber, all I would have to do is go into this asset library again. And I know just from personal experience that there's one that I really, really like. It's a vulcanized rubber. Is this rubber vulcanized raw? All I have to do is click send to and then send to stager. And if I have the prop selected, it'll automatically appear right on here. And there we go. And if I wanted to turn up the resolution on it, I could just make this a 4K texture. And now look at it. Look at it in all of its glory. Look at that. Look at those little, those little uh, rubber goop. I don't even know what to call those, but you can feel them. They're tactile. They're real. And they'll work on every angle. They're, they're extremely beneficial to have without any additional work. Again, just a simple search and a drag and drop. Now let's talk about this glass bottle itself. So by default, glass is clear, but we wanted that nice, rich brown color. Now your instinct might say, okay, cool. Let me click this bottle. We go in here to the color and I'll start adjusting. Oh wait, nothing's happening. Totally, totally normal. Because the color of glass is not derived from the color of the base material. Let me, let me explain what that means. So the way that substance works, it's off of a system called PBR, or physically based rendering. What this means is that this is going, this material is going to function as a real world material does. And for the ability to adjust the interior value of glass, you need to go down here into these interior settings and you need to adjust a couple things. Number one is the absorption distance. That's because this is a pretty small bottle, so we're gonna want that to be relatively low. The second one is absorption color. In here, we can go ahead and grab something that's a little bit warmer, a little bit darker, and start adjusting that. And we can continue to uh, modify this absorption uh, distance as well. So just like that, now you can start to see 
that this is really feeling like a glass bottle, right? Like the reflections are a nice crisp white, but the value, the absorption of what's going through the glass is a super dark value. And that's, that's kind of fun. So again, you can continue to tweak this or you make this a little bit more red versus yellow. You continue to refine and get that color exactly the way that you want. Once you have that, the next thing you want to do is you want to apply your label. And I know what you're thinking. If you've ever tried 3D software before in the past, it's super difficult to get an Illustrator file into a 3D application because it's vector art, right? Like you can't get vector art into, into a 3D file. It's actually no problem. I can just take the Illustrator file again, drag and drop it in here. Bang, there it is on top. And it automatically is wrapping around. And all I have to do is position it exactly where I want. Just like that. Easy peasy. Now the next step in this workflow is simply staging out this scene fluid. So for that, I'm just going to take this bottle dropper, move it up just a little bit. Going to go ahead and create a little bit of an, almost a studio setting. Again, just a little ground plane here on the ground. Duplicate that, rotate that, or that duplicated plane around for another wall. And do it again back over here. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll, you'll probably be familiar with that little process. But again, it's just a nice, simple, quick and easy way to create a little room. And I usually like to give my products a little pedestal to stand on. So we'll just make a little cube, hold down shift to drop that down and then grab the bottle. You've got this little circle here in the middle. This will allow me to stick to that surface and I'll just pop it right there in the middle. All right, so there we go. We've got our little scene going together. Now, the final step is I want to just make our, our camera, uh, position our camera create a little bit of a, a little added element to this and we'll call it a day. So I'll start with making a camera. That's just this little icon in the upper right. I click that. You can see now I have a camera in the scene with camera controls. Uh, for this, I'll just go ahead and make it a square format. I will, you know what? Cause you don't want to distort products too much. So you want to go ahead and use a little bit of a telephoto lens. Uh, I'll drop the angle down just a little bit to give it more of a heroic kind of an epic larger than life feel. And then I will also add in a little something here. You know what? Let's go ahead and throw out a little bit of a splash. So I will go ahead and type in splash. Drag and drop one of the static splashes from the stager library on in. Scale it up a little bit. And now I'll hop back into my original default camera. You can do that by this little drop down up here, or I hit the hot key, which is the little tilde. Allows me to switch back and forth. And now this allows me to position the uh, water droplets around it. But now looking through the camera, I'm like, oh, actually, it's going to block it. I can just rotate it around a little bit. So you, you don't have to go through, if you've ever done product photography, you don't have to go through like 35 iterations of it uh, in order to do that. Now, okay, cool. So I got this. Now I got this splash. Let's go ahead and make that a water material. Amazing. Now the last step, the last thing I want to do is just add a little bit of depth of field to the shot as well. So I can go ahead and activate the depth of field, set the focal point right on the middle of this bottle. And now I've got some depth of field going on. I can play around with the lighting if I want. Like we've got our default light rig in there. I can hold down the shift key and rotate that around. I can go in here into the lighting setup and try a few different ones until I uh, ultimately get one that I like. That looks kind of nice. Here's something a little soft for the studio setup. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. And then ultimately, you're going to get to the point where you're going to want to render this out. So I'll just make my ultimate selection here. And now I want to go ahead and click render. So to click render, you just go to the render tab here. Change it to a PSD file. You'll want to give it a location and a name that you want. You want to make sure that you have the right camera selected. Uh, you want to give it uh, whatever resolution is your goal at the end. If you're, I usually say high. If it's for a web version, ultra, if you're going print and then I click render. If you are fearful of long render times, I wouldn't be because in this particular case, this render takes a grand total of 14 seconds and I can go ahead here and that's with the screen recording and all that stuff going on. I can then take my, that PSD file that was just created, 
and open it in Photoshop. And inside of Photoshop here, you can see that I now have multiple matte passes to help me isolate different components of this image as well. So again, going back to that Photoshop witchcraft shenanigans that you all have, uh, if you want to continue to use those, go for it as well. Now, the last step in this process, and again, something I kind of hinted to earlier, was this idea of going back and hitting client notes, which is a huge part of the creative process, whether we like it or not. So um, the idea being is like, okay, let's say we go in here and the client says, oh no, you know, we need to redesign the label, you know, actually the, you know, instead of this band around the top, instead of that being kind of a gray, we want it to be a specific color. Uh, if you did some kind of mock-up stuff, it, it, it would be very difficult to replace that. In this particular case, like I said, it's it's incredibly easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, select this bottle, go into my materials. Again, I've got that graphic up here at the top. If I click the image and then just click the little pencil edit, the icon here, this will open that inside of Illustrator, in which case I can just go in and say, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this color to be the color that the client wants. And then all I have to do is click File, Save, and it automatically updates here, right? Because now you've got your 3D scene and your 2D file tethered together because this is all within the Adobe system. So now and forever, you can go back, make adjustments, do what you need to do after the fact to meet any notes very easily. And you can go home early, go see your family, go to the beach for the day, whatever you want to do. And just between you and me, you can tell the client it's going to take you another day to go ahead and get this done. So, so again, this whole 3D process was super simple. I did nothing but drag and drop things around, simple interactions here and there, and working with Photoshop and Illustrator and tools you're already comfortable with. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments down below. If you want to know more about Stager, check out my YouTube channel. I've got an entire Intro to Substance Stager series. And please let me know if you want to see any other content and videos like this. I'll be happy to make them for you. Until next time, be good, everyone.